Not one to want to, you know, scare the pants off everyone. The UN Secretary General says the era of global warming has ended and the era of global boiling has begun. As a mere mortal, it's hard to know what the hell is going on. The scientists don't agree, despite a lot of them saying that they do, and there is consensus. There's consensus about some things and not about others, like the rate of warming and the causes of warming and whether there's a damn thing that people in small countries like Australia and Great Britain can do about it. July will have been the hottest summer July ever recorded in the Northern Hemisphere, say the experts. Our cousins in Canada and the US are sweltering right now. Global temperature records have been breaking all summer. That heat feeding wildfires that have been destroying communities across Europe. Now, new analysis shows July is on track to be the hottest month in recorded history. We can already say with absolute certainty that it is going to be the warmest July. The UN Secretary General points to climate change and says it's terrifying. The era of global warming has ended. The era of global boiling has arrived. The air is unbreathable. The heat is unbearable. In the U.S., where 150 million people are under heat alerts, New York has declared a state of emergency. Heat kills uh, more New Yorkers every year than any other kind of extreme weather event. That clip was from a report by Canada's national broadcaster, the CBC. Here's a PR tip for the UN. If you want to add credibility to your cause, hysterical rhetoric like global boiling doesn't help. It has the reverse effect. It makes you look like irrational fools. South Australian Senator Alec Antic made this very serious point very humorously in federal parliament this week. We know that the climate alarmists terrify people with their language, but even by their own standards, this latest foray into the catastrophic language uh, is pretty outrageous. It's quite frankly sent the left in this building off like a rocket. They've been running around all week, waving their arms around like the robot from Lost in Space, uh, and it's all because of this, I believe. But you see, this isn't about facts, and it isn't about data, science or the environment. It's about politics, control and fear. And the alarmists need to remain fresh with their language to stay on the cutting edge. Otherwise, some other activists will crawl out from their mum's basement and take their mantle as the chief alarmist. So when I was a kid in the 1980s, Madam Acting Deputy President, they used the term greenhouse effect. But who's going to fear that? The greenhouse is a friendly place. So when the greenhouse effect became def defunct, they started using global warming. But you're not going to frighten kids with that. So they moved on to climate change. And then they could blame a snowstorm and a hurricane from climate change. But they needed to grow the fear exponentially. And then we got climate crisis, climate emergency, climate breakdown, and even climate apocalypse. But the question really is, where to from here? And so I've taken the liberty of coming up with five suggested names that I think will be much more terrifying so that the UN can use them in advance. I've come up with, number one, global climate inferno, which sounds pretty terrifying. Number two, mega universe heat death. That one should work. Number three, super global spine chillingly hot, which I think might terrify the kids. Uh, stop using your stove, you capitalists. I reckon that one will work. And then the final one that I held up uh, for, for consideration is you will die soon, which I think should do the job. Terrify everybody, inform nobody. Um, that's the way of the world now. South Australian Senator Alec Antic speaking in the Senate this week. Global boiling aside, let's, let's put that aside and get back to the more rational side of the debate. Former UK Labor Prime Minister Tony Blair told the political editor of the New Statesman magazine in the UK this past week something that shocked a lot of people. He said, quote, it's the single biggest global challenge and Britain should play its part in that, but there's not much Britain can do about it when one year's rise in China's emissions would outscore the whole of Britain's emissions for a year. His argument seems to reflect that of many Australian commentators that the real zero in net zero is the zero effect that any change we make in our country would have on global warming. That it's just shooting ourselves in the foot to cut back on our coal and other industry to reduce carbon emissions while other bigger countries continue to increase theirs. Blair went on to say, don't ask us to do a huge amount when frankly, whatever we do in Britain is not really going to impact climate change. 
The number one issue today, and this is where Britain could play a part, is how do you finance the energy transition? Because basically, the developed world's emissions are going down, but the developing worlds are going up. These countries have got to grow. So how do you finance the transition? Secondly, how do you accelerate the technology? Well, I'll tell you how. Capitalism. More technology and more development, not less. That's the real solution to climate change. But it's not the one that the Greens want to hear. They've been trying to use global warming to push a socialist and globalist agenda of centralised control. So having a real technological solution isn't in their political interests. It'll just stuff them right up. With energy prices on the up and up, adding to other inflation pressures, Aussies, like their British cousins, are fast waking up to the fact that we might be, as the London Telegraph newspaper puts it, moving towards net zero at a speed near the limits of what the electorate will bear. The Labor Party in the UK has already all but abandoned its £28 billion a year green prosperity plan. Labor leader Keir Starmer's plan to decarbonise all electricity generation by 2030 is an ambitious and risky one that will also cost billions, so it may also get the chop by election time. 